Welcome to this video lecture series on transportation engineering. In this session, we shall discuss on the vehicular characteristics while traveling on the roads. Now, vehicular characteristics uh, are the basic characteristics that a vehicle it has and its effect on the design and the traffic performance. The vehicle characteristics it consists of two basic types first is the static characteristics and second is the dynamic characteristics static characteristics they basically include the um, length width and the height weight and the maximum turning angle of the vehicle next is the dynamic characteristics that is while the vehicle it is in motion and it includes the speed, acceleration, the braking characteristics and certain aspects of the body design of the vehicle. In the first case, that is in regards with the static characteristics, first is the vehicle dimension. The width of the vehicle, it directly affects the weight, width of the traffic lanes, the shoulder and the parking facilities as having greater width of the vehicle requires the greater width of road while traveling on the lanes. Similarly for the parking of the vehicle in the parking lots. Second is the height. The height it affects the clearance of the overhead structures, the under bridges and the clearance under over bridges the electric and other service lines etc the height of the driver seat to in order to provide the clear vision of the road to his front and the sides and the height of the headlight which affects the side distance at the valley curves next is the length the important factors in the design of the horizontal alignment here the length affects the following the safe overtaking distance then the capacity of the road then the extra winding which has to be provided on the curves then the minimum turning radius for the vehicles then the parking facilities and lastly the design of the valley curves the vehicular dimensions as you can see from the figure the motorized two vehicles or the vehicle type, its length, width and area while it moves on the road is shown. First is the motorized two wheeler that is a two wheeler. The length is 1.87 meters, width 0.64 meters and area occupied by a two wheeler on a road is 1.2 meters square. And consequently this information can be visualized from the table for the motorized three wheeler vehicle, the standardized car, then the big car, then the light commercial vehicle that is the LCV, then the bus, then the two axle, three axle trucks, multi axle vehicles that is the MAV, tractors, the tractors with the trailers, pedestal cycles, cycle rickshaws, animal drawn vehicles, etc. Now the static characteristics of the vehicles again has the weight characteristics. That weight, it affects the design of the pavement thickness and the gradients. Uh, here the type of vehicle load which vehicle it carries, it directly affects onto the pavement thickness. as if the road is prone to be used for carrying the heavy loads, then there should be an increase into the depth of the pavement, consequently leading to the increase into the number of layers. Whereas in case of the gradients, the limiting gradients are governed by the weight and power of the vehicles. For example, if a heavily loaded vehicle is traveling through a road and if it has a steep slope or a rising gradient a steep rising gradient in that case 
these gradients they will directly affect on to the power of the vehicles in order to ascend this steep rise and the braking capacity in the case of the steep slope next is power the power of the heaviest and loaded weights vehicles govern the permissible and limiting gradients as discussed earlier it also affects the speed and acceleration of the vehicle and fourth is the minimum turning radius which depends upon the length of the wheel base and the features of the steering system and it affects the design of the sharp curves now the dynamic characteristics the dynamic characteristics first we have the speed the speed it affects first is the side distance second is the super elevation which is provided at the curves to the road then the length of the transition curve that is the ease in with which the driver can move the vehicle from a straight road to a circular curve then the vertical curves and then the width of the pavement and the shoulder the design gradient the design um, the ca capacity of the traffic lane the design of the intersections and lastly the design speed controls most of the geometric features of the highway next is the acceleration which is governed by the vehicle transmission system the weight and horsepower that means the total um, capacity of the engine of the vehicle to generate power the maximum deceleration de rate depends upon the friction between the tires and the pavement the braking characteristics which is of the prime importance here it gets affect it affects the safety of the vehicle operation the stopping distance and the spacing in between the two consecutive vehicles in a traffic system the interaction in between or the friction in between the tire and the road it governs directly the braking performance and this braking characteristics is one of the prime causes of accidents uh, as if the braking of the wheels it gets locked and the driver he loses the control of the vehicle next is the vehicle lightning system the lightning system of a vehicle it consists of the headlight the rear lamps and the direction indicators the first the headlights the headlights uh, are to provide a main beam for the driver to see the road ahead and it gives a clear vision of the road during the night time and to provide a deeper beam for avoiding the glare to the opposite traffic if an opposite vehicle is traveling then the driver traveling through a car he can use the deeper beam in order to avoid the glare from the oppositely moving vehicle rear lamps they give the indication to the driver about the presence of the vehicle in front of him and it avoids the front to rear collision that means it gives an alert to the driver to visualize the vehicle moving in front of him third is the direction indicators which give an adequate intention of the driver to turn or to stop but they are generally of the amber in color with the blinking lights the five critical components uh, interact in the traffic systems are as follows first is the road user the road users like the drivers pedestrians cyclists and the passengers second are the vehicles the private and the commercial vehicles third are the roads and the highways the types of roads or the highways it is a critical component of the traffic system and the traffic control devices what sorts of traffic control devices are being implemented on the road or the highway it directly leads to the regulation of law or the control of the traffic and eventually the nature of um, the traffic or the mindset of the driver while he or she is driving in his or her car on the road 
costs. Lastly, the general environment. With this we shall stop. Thank you.